The age-old question, what cone do you bisk to? First things first, I'm going to map out my kiln shelves on the table before uh, I start loading it into the kiln because you start bending over that kiln and you're trying to figure out how to fit everything together. It is a puzzle and you'll be calling for the chiropractor by the end of it. So I'm going to put the puzzle together up here first and then uh, go after it in the kiln. Even though it is a bisque kiln, still loading the tallest wear on the bottom so that in the coolest part of the kiln, the heat can move around more freely. And so then the very smallest things will go in the top. Thanks for coming, everybody. The bats that I buy for my wheels are just a hair smaller, about a half an inch all the way around, than the shelves for my kiln. If they hang off of this a little bit, then they're not going to hang off of the shelf at all, which is what we want. So now I have my feet down in there. I rotate these feet every after every time that I take the bottom shelf out. And all I need to do is line up this with one of them. And then I'm going to take my fingers and mark where the other two go. I can now take this over to the table, put kiln posts in those three places. I can map out my kiln shelves even more efficiently. If your kiln is bigger than mine, you know, just take some tar paper, um, anything, newsprint, whatever you have, and trace your kiln shelves so that you can lay that on your table and then map out your kiln. If I were Superman, I would probably just put my kiln shelves on the table and then move all the wear over and into the kiln. But I'm not Superman. I'm simply not willing to sacrifice that many pots to my clumsiness. <laughs> so. So this is a map for my first shelf. I'm going to start by moving these into the kiln and then moving this into the kiln where I can see it through the peephole. And then in reference to the, uh, that going into the kiln, I know that I can put this mug in and this mug in because they sandwich this and I can put this mug in and the, you're probably not going to be able to see how it works, but it really does. <laughs> what cone do you bisque? I think there is some um, confusion around this particular topic uh, because it depends on uh, whether or not you're doing low fire work. And um, the difference is in low fire work, um, the glazes are vitrified at cone 06 
but the wear is not ever vitrified, really, the way that stoneware and porcelain are, but the wear is, is not vitrified until cone 04, which is hotter than cone 06. And um, therefore, if your glazes are gonna turn out correctly, then you need to take your uh, bisque firing all the way to vitreous on earthenware. So on earthenware, you bisque to cone 04. Stoneware and porcelain are different, but stoneware and porcelain bisque-wise are the same. There's actually a term biscuit firing and technically a bisque firing is when you go above where you plan to glaze. So your bisque is above where you plan to glaze and a biscuit firing is below where you plan to glaze. So technically uh, both stoneware and porcelain are biscuit fired. The difference when you are biscuit firing for stoneware and uh, porcelain is how absorbent do you want your clay body to be? And I have done biscuit firings at 06, 05, and 04, and I can tell you there is a marked difference in uh, cone 06 to cone 04. Cone 04, you dip the piece into the glaze, you pull it out, and it it drips all over the place. You have to dip it in the glaze, hold it there, pull it out, and wait. And it's annoying. Cone 06, however, you dip it in, you pull it out, you wait a second or two, and it's done. If you brush on your glazes rather than dipping them, Cone 04 might be more advantageous, advantageous for you because you'll have more open time. So you'll be able to brush and be able to get all the way around the pot before the glaze coat dries completely, which means you'll see fewer thicker and thinner spots. You'll get more even of a coat if you're brushing on glaze with cone 04. Celadons, a lot of times you'll dip one side of a celadon and you'll dip it back in, or you'll roll it through and you'll get this stripe down the side of the pot. You see this kind of thing right here? Uh, because the water doesn't soak into the pot as quickly, it's a lot easier, you can take a brush to something like that and smooth it out and it and kind of help it self-level a little bit uh, because you have more open time with a, cl with a cone 04 bisque uh, than you do with a cone 06 bisque. I am way too impatient for a cone 04 bisque. Cone 06 to 05. Cone 05 to 04, there is a difference, but it's not a marked difference. Most of the carbon uh, in the body of the clay burns out at cone 04. Some people with some clays uh, get pinholing from carbon burnout. I do not. So depending on your clay body, that might be a factor. That is not the only thing by any stretch of the imagination that will cause pinholing. 
However, if you have one of those clays that pinholes for that reason, then <laughs> a cone 04 bisque will fix that. You're gonna find yourself either wanting to do cone 06 or wanting to do cone 04. Um, but you can tell, oh my gosh, can you tell when you're glazing pots, whether or not this is an 06 or this is an 04. That pretty much sums up everything I know about why someone would choose 04 or 06 for their bisque. And I hope I have not bored you to death. Okay, finally, when you have flat pieces, you want to help the circulation of air get to those pieces. So you probably don't want to stack them like this. Now I could stack them up like this if I had the room, but I don't. So what I'm going to do instead is stack them staggered like this, and that will allow heat to get to both the bottom plate and the top plate more evenly. When you're talking about plates, there really isn't any kind of even way to get heat to them. But this uh, is better than stacking them directly on top of each other. Because what happens is this bottom plate doesn't get any heat until the very last of the last of the last of the last, and then it's gonna take on glaze differently than the other plates. And your plates won't match as well as if you facilitate the airflow around them in the bis kiln. The kiln is on. And now I'm babysitting. I'm just sitting out here listening to it. Click on and off and listening for any kind of popcorn sound. That's my goal. It's all done. <laughs> uh, apparently got a little over cone 06. Uh, I did want to mention, I put a tiny cone on the top. I do that often because um, there's not vertical space. I can't see it anyway. You can see that this one has bent just a teensy tiny bit, but the small cones and the larger cones are set to bend at two different temperatures. Why? I have no idea. But if you look on the Orton cone chart, you'll see that. But check this out. Oh, so excited. So excited to start using these. Here are my little ladybugs and my bees. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I'm so excited. Uh, but these are done. They are ready to use. All the rest of this stuff, it's time for glazing day. Glazing days are hard. So maybe we'll wait and do some ladybugs and bumblebees first. <laughs> Thanks for coming, everybody. simply not willing to sacrifice that many plots. Plots. I oh, am I still recording?